Uh, before we get into that, there is somebody else that I would like to introduce, actually. Um, the individual that had a lot to do with the cyclist sculpture that is here in the park outside the building. Um, a gentleman that is both a practicing dentist and a sculptor. So if you want a really interesting crown made, <laughs> this might be the person to speak to. I can give him a reference. Okay. <laughs> so Eric, if you'd like to come up and say a few words, Eric Abmason. I'm Eric Amundsen. I live in Tallahassee and my main residence is actually here in Gainesville. So I spend a good amount of my time in Gainesville. In 1996, I was living full time in Gainesville and I was in the sculpture department at the University of Florida in the um, graduate program. I was working with sustainable materials with a fellow uh, who became my best friend and his name is Brad Guy. Brad approached me one day and said that Linda Kreider had come up to him and asked him about the possibilities of creating a memorial for the people that were killed and injured in a very serious bike crash the day after Christmas in 96. And we just were like, oh my God, that's huge. And that's terrible, et cetera, et cetera. We had a meeting with Linda and she was the inspiration for the bicycle memorial, bicycle safety memorial. Um, working with rammed earth was what I was doing at the time and researching the materials, a, stain, a sustainable building material. And we saw that it worked right in to the whole sustainability aspect of our city, of the way that the downtown area was trying to redevelop and, and um, inform people about a lot of the issues that we were facing at the time. But this tragedy just overwhelmed us. And we tried to find a way that was going to involve the people in the community because Artists who consider memorial or the whole aspect of memorial realize that the community involvement, involvement of people in the project is the most important aspect of keeping the memorial effort alive. And in this case, extremely important issue. We had two very high profile cycling advocates killed, Doug Hill, and uh, Margaret Renault, uh, very emotional issue as you can tell, and I, I don't get this way that often when I'm speaking. But the whole process of getting the folks to allow us to take their bikes and put them into these rammed earth monoliths and then taking the soils, mixing them with the people of the community here over 100 people helped us, mixing soils by hand, loading them into these uh, monoliths that we rammed into. Um, it was amazing and still retains an intense emotional level. I think artists are supposed to relate to emotional and creative aspects of a community. This was a a uh, prototypical project involving the uh, situation. And it remains to be so. And the fact that it's still alive is most intriguing. I think Margaret and Doug were an amazing loss and um, need to be remembered and inspire us continually. Um, the other people involved were injured and amazingly, you know, this project lives on in a lot of ways. My best friend, Brad Guy, who was with me at the time when we met with Linda Kreider, was a co-designer of this project and worked on it tirelessly. He ended up marrying one of the injured people in the accident, Lori Trilsey. We didn't even know Lori at the time. I married her best friend later, you know, uh, Sherry. Amundsen who's sitting here also and in that way a lot of us still remain uh, very connected to this project as the community does as all of you do 
I, uh, I want to say something. Linda gave me a paper a long time ago about the making of a bicycle-friendly city by Kermit Sigmund. Our prototype for this project was a memorial on campus that's right between the architecture college and the math college. Kermit Sigmund, who was one of the, the uh, earliest promoters of cycling in this city and a tireless advocate, um, is memorialized in that prototype along with Margaret Raynell. Their bikes are in that prototype on campus, right on Stadium Road there that we can all see. Again, that doesn't have any signage on it either. Um, the last part of Kermit's paper says, and I'll close with this, says that one must continue, however, to point out the viability and long-term wisdom of the bicycle as an urban vehicle, because in Gainesville, as elsewhere, it is often overlooked. The challenge never ends. That was in 1989, and I think it's still pretty um, significant today. Thanks. Thank you, Eric.